first it was just the ignition switches, and now you're looking at a series of other recalls. These new recalls, by the way, that 7.6 million, that's just in the United States. It's 8.4 million worldwide. So you look at all the worldwide recalls from General Motors this year, it's over 28 million. It might even be 29 million, but I know it's over right. 28 million. Uh, and so the, the question now comes down to quality control. I mean, what, what's been going on at General Motors over the last 10 years? Welcome to this week's installment of How an American Automotive Giant Continues to Prove How Deep Their Mindless Attempt to Build Competitive and Safe Cars Fails Miserably. After all, let's face it, certainly seems that way. Pedal to the metal. Let's welcome in the nationally syndicated master of everything that is automotive from New York. The car coach, Lauren Fix, joins us today. Good to see you again, Lauren. Good to see you, too, Ed. All right, here come some numbers. I'm going to let everybody see some numbers here right up front. Let's, let's look at this on GM. Versus other car makers for 2014, General Motors has 28.5 million recalls worldwide of the total 39.85 million. So they've got actually 33 million to 39 million. That's just on the recalls. Now, here's the recalls for 2004. That was the highest record of recalls in 2004, 33. Now we're back here up again. We're back around 40 million. It's, it's out of hand. Look at this, 39.85 million auto recalls total for General Motors. Everybody else, 11.35 million. Lauren, honestly, right now, why would anybody want to buy a General Motors car? Well, they're selling them. If you look at their sales, they were up 1% and fleet sales were up 2%. And why is that? Because as someone, I used to train dealers on the new cars that came out. And I'll tell you what, the smartest dealer is the one that says, when you come in with your Cobalt, your Saturn Ion, you've got a problem. Hey, you know what? Let me show you some of the new product. We have employee discounts. You'll save some money. We'll put you in a safer car. Come on up front. Let me show you the showroom. Yeah, but and wait course, a minute. Is there a the safer trade. car, though? I mean, that's the point. Is General Motors capable at this point of making a safe car? I think they are capable. I think they've got a lot of skeletons in the closet. And there's two ways to look at this. One is, oh my gosh, there's even more coming. This is a train wreck and it's a train just running out of control off the tracks. Or is it Mary Barra saying, you know what? We're done with playing kindergarten. We're gonna pull out all these issues that have been hiding in drawers, under carpets, in closets, and we're gonna roll them on a little at a time, let everybody know what's going on, and then she's gonna take charge and rearrange the company. If that is the truth, it'll be a stronger GM than ever, unless the board of directors says, thank you very much for being our face for the time being, have a nice day, which I hope they don't, because the fact is if she really is taking charge, GM will be better. So I think they have the capability of making better cars, but right now, I don't know. I mean, you're looking at 04 to 2014 cars being recalled. You know, Cadillac, Chevy Cruze, Sonics. I mean, is there anything that hasn't been recalled? Not much. But if you're going to rearrange the company, which I agree has to be done, how yes. is this going to affect the bottom line when it comes down to workers, salaries, money that's in the pipeline here, people having jobs? It all has to filter down somewhere. Right, absolutely. Right now they have an old school type mentality, the old GM nod, you know, they're walking in and pointing, hey, Ed, you've got that handled, right? And it never gets done. So that culture is still embedded. She needs to get rid of more than 15 people. There are absolutely more than 15 people that are involved in all these recalls and all these defective parts, parts that didn't meet quality control standards. Someone needs to get in there, clean house completely, bring in some new blood, a new culture, and then there's gonna be change. Is that gonna happen overnight? Not a chance. That's going to be over time, and I don't see it coming around in the next year, but maybe in the next couple of years, if this is truly her plan, and she actually has a business plan that talks about changing the culture, getting rid of the silos, and actual communication without someone getting fired, I think you're going to see some big changes. How would you expect the other manufacturers, the other automakers, to take advantage of this? Because I, I have a feeling, and it's just me, that any day now we're going to see a commercial somewhere or hear one that'll go, hey, XX whatever it is car, we're safer than General Motors. Oh, I'm sure you're going to see that eventually as well. You know, it's funny, you look at Ford, what Alan Mulally had did with Ford Motor Company, and now Mark Fields took over July 1st. You know that they're not, they're not saying anything bad about GM, but you know what? They didn't take the bailout, and they did actually do an ad with We Didn't Take the Bailout. So their product is doing well. Their growth wasn't so great for the month of June, but Chrysler had huge growth, almost 30% growth in their Jeep lineup. They're just saying, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to put out the best product we can. We're going to come with all fresh lineup. Look at the Chrysler 200. So Chrysler has done that. Marcioni just hasn't said, hey, nano, nano, I'm the one that didn't screw up. So we'll see what happens in the big picture. But when you look at sales overall, 
the Germans have really just taken every opportunity by storm by offering the A3 and the CLA from Mercedes. I mean, BMW now has the one series. Everybody's got cars to those entry level marketplaces. Hey, who wouldn't want to drive a German car? Once you've driven one, it's hard to drive much else. So sales are up like 38% for Audi. And you look at Nissan sales as well. Everybody's taking advantage of somebody else's huge, huge mistake. A couple of minutes we have left here. I don't know about you, but one of the great things about driving a car is being able to actually drive a yeah. car for those of us who enjoy it. Now we have Google, driverless yes. cars. It's sitting there. Isn't Detroit, though, really a little concerned about this? Because isn't this going to take a huge bite out of them? Well, actually, the Google car is being produced by Roush, who makes race cars. And yeah, I think they're a little concerned, although Ford is involved in making one in Volvo and the Germans and the Japanese. Everyone's got an autonomous car. I still think that, you know what, I'm not about to give up my driving of a car, especially think of all these recalls, unintended acceleration, cars that shut off on their own, airbags that don't deploy, possible fires. The last thing I'm going to do is let a car drive me. Now, there are people that will want this, but the problem, what you're going to get on the backside, is all these driver ed kids that are learning how to drive are going to think, hey, my mommy's going to buy me a self-driving car or I'll use theirs. or the people that do stupid things like, I don't want to go see my ex, so I'll put the child in the car with the dog and send them to their house <laughs> through the programming. I'm telling you, there's going to be all kinds of litigation involved. There's going to be all kinds of government regulation. And the truth is, there's a lot of negative before there's going to be positive. We are not ready for autonomous cars. Maybe 2020, but right now, I wouldn't take a chance. 30 seconds. Will they really be safe slash foolproof? Of course, we know the answer to this question. Nothing is foolproof. <laughs> Look at all the cars that are on the road right now. Every manufacturer has a small recall. Will they be safe? Yes. Volvo's already produced a car that is autonomous. I have ridden in it. They are planning on bringing 100 of them to the road in Sweden. They will work because we're already driving partially autonomous cars now. you got cars that communicate car to car. You know when there's construction up ahead. You know when there's an accident because you see it on your GPS. You also have active cruise control, lane change departure, cross traffic alert. All these things are already in place. So they're sort of giving us a little morsel at a time. So by the time it does become autonomous, people will be more comfortable. But the fact is, totally distracting yourself with reading the paper, shaving, putting on makeup, or changing the radio station and not looking at the roadway is probably not a safe choice. They can't put wheelie bars on it. That's it. I'm all done. I'm not, not, <laughs> not going to bother with it. Lauren exactly. Fix, the car coach. It is always a pleasure. Great to see you again, and we'll see you again next week. Good to see you, too. All right, take care. Lauren Fix, laurenfix.com, and the car coach. Make sure you search her out because she's nice enough to be here every week. You should check out what she has to say. We've got more to say right here on Midpoint, where every day we question everything.